gender later in a later lecture, picking up, oops, sorry, we're going to do some stuff on gender, picking up on a later lecture. But I wanted to do some stuff, some more stuff that your text doesn't cover on other ways that we do status. So one way that we see status play out in a culture, and on Wednesday, uh, I'm going to discuss this more. Now, there is, uh, there is no class Monday. I don't know if I mentioned that. What? There's no class Monday. I have to go to court to be an expert witness. Uh, but I didn't witness something. The expert part is I'm being called in to address uh, an issue. Um, I'm going to send you an article from your that's referenced in your textbook for you to read. That's going to get at some of this inequality stuff. So that's what's going to happen. So it's going to do it Monday for y'all. And you have to read the article, and your attendance will be the, turning in a type summary of how it relates to. <coughs> Question. So we have a question for this. Makes sense? So I'll give you an article and you have to read it, type summary of the question that I sent. And bring it in on Wednesday or? Yeah, bring it in on Wednesday. And this is, if you're using the clickers, how you would get the what? physical copy of the summary. Physical copy. Yeah. But I don't need a physical copy of the article. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely correct. Uh, I want to introduce a phenomenon known as spacism. Uh, and this is actually very easy to grasp. So if we were to compute the area of this photograph taken up by this woman's face, this would be what we would call high facism, that a great deal of the photograph is taken up with her face. And this is easy to see when you do a contrast to another picture where the amount of the picture taken up by her face is less. So we have this high facism versus low facism. Now, what one can do, and unfortunately I sort of let the cat out of the bag already um, by showing the same person, but let's imagine, oh, you can actually do this with the same person. This person is applying for a job as a human resources director. Which photograph of her should she submit? The one on the left or the one on the right? Your clickers. Mm -hmm. you, we, can, we can then discuss it. A, A is left. No, it wasn't even an answer choice. Was A, no. Yeah, I didn't go with no. No, no. no. So, no, these are the only two pictures she has in her portfolio. Well, that's her name. Well, you know what? That is a different issue that you need to take up with her at a later time. Uh, good, there's 20. Ooh, now we can break the tie. Let's see what we're going to pick. Should you pick the one on the why the one on the left? Y'all y'all picked correctly, as it were. Why the one on the left? Because on the right one is more for model portfolio or something. It's not for sexy. the job she's you know. Not for the job she's applying yeah. for. Yeah. It's too sexy. Yeah. What? I said it depends what company though. It depends on what company <laughs> she's applying for. Um so this one does so in in a positive way, does the one on the left convey something different than I mean, the one on the right certainly could be used for many purposes, but does she, does she look more serious, more diligent, or just, or are y'all too distracted by the one on the right? No distracted, like, oh, you know, look at her figure versus the one on the left or not. This is an area, you know, why? Why do you like the one on the left? You, all you do is give me criticisms of the one on the right. It doesn't mean that you like the one on the left. <laughs> you know what this, okay, this is a, I'm gonna give potential extra credit on this one then. I'm gonna tell you the research that exists, <coughs> right? So the way that the research is typically done is uh, they ask questions about the left or the right photograph, or in our case, the high versus low facism. And so I go, which one should she submit? And so people have gone, oh, well, you know, this one. But they may be making this one not because they like this one, but because they think this one is bad. So I'm going to do some of this research. Now, we're going to have to decide whether or not that's going to be a plausible explanation. But, but that, that's, a, that's a good, good cr potential criticism, that it may not be a preference. It may be a, a vote against. So I'll tell you what some people have done. They have done... Pick, they've done this across cultures where they've got magazine photographs and they tend to find a rather peculiar pattern 
on this fascism index that males tend to be higher in fascism. Whether you're in America, Chile, France, Hong Kong, Italy, Kenya, Mexico, Middle East, Spain. Hmm. You're another one here. Uh, you can look at portraits. Now, notice the scale, so the, the, the effect is not as pronounced, but nonetheless, <coughs> males higher fascism. Uh, you can ask kids to, to draw pictures of males and females, and they tend to draw males with high fascism. Why? Or females with low fascism. The woman's body seems to be more of a focus in our society than her face. And well, it's not just our society. Remember, we, we well, looked at okay, I guess. Forever, and then it knows. <laughs> <laughs> so it's more the face and the body. Wait, so are I'm you more saying that males tend to... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I don't, were you saying that males tend to have higher faces? Yeah, males have higher faces. This is a rating of faces. So then it wouldn't be a body thing, right? Right. But females have low faces. Which so means more pictures you get of more of their, body. their bodies and more males. So, oh, so males face. take more pictures with high faces. No, pictures of males tend to be high faces. <coughs> Whereas pictures of there's, there's my dude. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and pictures of females tend to be low faces. Gotcha. Okay. Right. You take a drawing class. Yeah. Your lectures improve. Um, so then the question becomes, is this helping me? This person looks angry. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's International Woman's Day. Why do you gotta draw a picture of my body? Um, okay, so what so do you think it's so uh, one explanation is that there's this emphasis on the female body? Uh, what else might be the case? Actually, one of the researchers who does this agrees with you. She's like, we, we want to hear what the woman has to say, but we also wonder if her dress matches her shoes. You, you can say why, but if, if you're finding these phenomena, it's worth at least going, is this, is this revealing something? So you gave the explanation that it's because we, so that we want the emphasis on the female body, but what about the other explanation if we were just to go, what is, what is just showing the face indicate? So if we go back to our initial picture, what is just showing the face? Authority. So authority is going to know that this gets caught into that, but it's like we're looking at where her intellect, you know, the seat of her intellect is. We might be looking here going, does this person look smart? Do they look... You know, like, you talk to some people and they have their eyes where they're just, you know, you can tell there's nothing there, glazed yeah, over. Yeah. Glazed over. Towards other people are, like, always, you know, engaged with their eyes. So, researchers have wondered if that's the possible explanation. Uh, and they find, I'm just going to tell you, they find this effect all over the place. No surprise, in beer commercials, there's a huge facism effect. Uh, males, if they appear at all, you get more of their face. Females, you tend to get a lot of their bodies. No surprise. Um, so a question though is whether this has any implications for us, and there's research suggesting that it does. Uh, some researchers believe that the male face gets emphasized because it's the center of intelligence, personality, character, and so forth, and so that societies are making a judgment about males. They're saying, well, males are smarter, so let's emphasize that. Oops, so smarter, <laughs> ironically enough. <laughs> males, males, smarter. Mm. Uh, <laughs> other males, clearly. Yeah. Uh, consistent with this, they show that individuals with high on facism are perceived as more intelligent. People, if you photograph them high facism, tend to be perceived as more ambitious and interestingly, even more attractive. I mean, but this does sort of give ideas. Like you could see whether or not this facism plays out, facism effect plays out in self-portraits, right? Where's one place one could find self-portraits and measure facism? Facebook. Facebook. And actually, this plays out on Facebook too. People have done research with Facebook photographs and find the facism effect. 
in people's photographs of themselves. It's sort of weird. Uh, other studies have found that high facism tends to indicate dominance, so when you said authority, and competence. Sort of intriguing that we do this, we see this picture. Well, if this is true, this, this is where it starts getting into the cross-cultural stuff. <coughs> What group do you think tends to get photographed with high faces? What group? What group? What group? Say what racial group tends to get high faces? White males. Yeah, white males. Whites tend to be photographed, whites in general, and white males tend to be photographed more with high facism. And other groups, minority groups, with low faces. So one question about whether or not this is a subtle way people are indicating status in a culture. You probably never noticed this effect till today. What you do, you'll see it, you'll go, oh, wow. We really do. Any question about the facism effect? I want to check to see if there's a slide that I'm missing here. It should have already come up. This fake, I have to show this slide on Monday. Oh, sorry. Wednesday. All right, so give another piece of research on this. Uh, another way in which we do status in societies. There's a phrase in social psychology called the what is beautiful is good effect. <clears throat> if you get a chance to be reborn, if your religion preaches that or teaches that, and you get a choice about to be attractive or ugly, I suggest picking attractive. <laughs> For various reasons. Um, you know, so for example, I'll give you one of the classic studies on the importance of attractiveness, though there are many, many factors that do this. This is going to be one with mating, though. But they've shown the importance of attractiveness. If you're attractive, you're less likely to be arrested, less likely to be charged if you are arrested. See if you can follow this train down. Less likely to be convicted goes to trial, and let's say you're convicted. You, get, you tend to get a lower sentence, except in one situation. And this is sort of the downside. There's one case in which people tend to get higher sentences if they're attractive. If they've used their attractiveness to commit the crime. And then people, they hate that. <laughs> Have you seen the, um, the documentary on this, on sexual attraction on Netflix? Which it's, one? There's like there's one that's called like sexual attraction, and it's basically it's just the biological perspective on what is attractive. Yeah, it's really cool. I have seen like a number of these, so I don't know if I've seen that one called that, uh, but I'm like. Is that the one where you're talking about a ghost all the way down to the beginning? Uh, <laughs> well, you can email me the link or the, link, or the name yeah. that I can pick it up if I haven't seen it yet. I mean, because I watch documentaries all the time. Yeah. Uh, but this was a pretty set, this is a pretty interesting study of the effects of attractiveness, and I don't know why we're surprised other than this took place back in the 70s. Um, so, in this first study, what they did was they paired couple. They told people they were going to computer match them, so like you know, fill out a personality profile. The other person fills out a personality profile. And they matched the males and females up, and they then asked them later, "Would you like to go on a date again with this person?" There's only one factor that predicted whether or not the people wanted to go on a date again. The this was back in the 70s, so a little different. People were not hooking up as much. They, they did hook up in the 70s, but they called it something else. It was one of the only variable, though, that predicted whether or not they wanted to see each other. Attractiveness. Didn't matter what the personality was like.